high common mode voltage applications are prevalent throughout industrial spaces, telecom systems and alternative energy spaces. And common mode rejection ratio is key for those applications. My name is Jose Duenas, Precision Linear Marketing Engineer at Texas Instruments. And I'm Greg Johnson, Precision Linear Design Engineer at TI. Today, Greg and I would like to introduce to you the INA149, Texas Instruments' new difference amplifier for applications with common mode voltages up to plus or minus 275 volts. Now, Greg, in my role, I have a chance to talk with our customers fairly often. I talk with their design engineers, and one of the concerns, one of the needs that they often bring up is that of making measurements of small signals that sometimes can be embedded in fairly large common mode voltages, sometimes as high as 200, 250, almost close to 300 volts above ground or below ground. Now, I know our INA149 has a common mode input range that can handle those voltages fairly well, and it's by far the industry's most accurate difference amplifier. Absolutely. Could you please explain us um, how the INA149 achieves such great accuracy? Absolutely, Jose. In fact, as you mentioned in the beginning, common mode rejection ratio is the key spec for high voltage measurements. This right here is the evaluation module for the INA149, and it's available right now on our website to our customers. And it's an excellent way to to examine the, the high performance of the INA149. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the board right here. We we're able to tie in the inputs over on the left hand side of the board. Mm -hmm. Power supplies hook in right here. Mm -hmm. The INA149 is already soldered in, in the center of the board. I see, yep. Yeah. We have some additional space to put circuitry here in case the customer would like to put something other than ground on the reference potential. Right, right. We also have some extra board space to tie in extra loads, capacitive resistive loads, mm -hmm. and maybe some other circuitry the customer would like to use. Mm -hmm. We tie mm -hmm. the output right here. Excellent, excellent. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, could you walk us through the first setup that you will do for, uh, for our experiment? Absolutely. Let me set this aside here. For our experiment today, we need just a few, few key components. We've got some func a function generator, mm -hmm. a couple of power supplies, mm -hmm. an oscilloscope, and a little enclosure here, which we'll explain in a little bit. Okay, okay, sounds good, yeah, yeah. And I see we have one of our EVMs there. We certainly do have one of the EVMs, and let me explain the, the circuit in a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. have a standard laboratory function generator okay. that only goes to plus or minus 10 volts. Okay. Since we need a very high voltage, 250, 300 volts right, for right. experiment, I have a power amplifier inside the box. Mm -hmm that happens to have two power supplies that can go up to four or five hundred volts if we need it. Right, right, okay. The power amplifier amplifies the signal from the function generator and takes it to the input of the INA149 or a difference or another different amplifier. And in this circuit, mm -hmm. we tie the two inputs together. So there's zero volts differential. Oh, okay, so in that case, if you're applying zero volts differential, you would ideally expect the output to be zero. Exactly. In an ideal difference amplifier, the common mode rejection ratio is infinite. We would expect zero volts in the output when both of the inputs are shorted together. Right, right. So that output that we would see on a real amplifier in that case then would be an error in the measurement. Exactly. Anything we see on the output would be an error. All right, well, right on. Let's go ahead and start uh, looking at, at some of the waveforms uh, you have here on the oscilloscope. So in this experiment, Jose, mm -hmm. we're going to look at a different amplifier that's available on the market and recall that we're shorting the two inputs together. Right, right. And we're applying a, a high voltage common mode signal and it's going to be at 500 hertz. Exactly, exactly. So maybe let's see what our input signal looks like. That represents our input signal. All right. And this right here is a 500 volt peak peak sine wave or 250 oh. volts peak. Okay, so we're going up above ground 250 and we're coming down below ground another 250 volts. That's correct. Excellent. That's correct. And we apply that to the input, the, the, the differential inputs, the two inputs are tied together, mm -hmm. and then we put the scope probe on the output of the diff amp. All right, let's so see let's how see the output looks, looks like. like. Okay. Sine wave. Yeah. Remember, remember in the ideal case, this would have been ground. Right, right. In an ideal 
different amplifier, we would expect to see no signal whatsoever. But but how how let's, big is that one? This signal here. Let's measure that. <laughs> That's 20 millivolts peak to peak. Oh my, okay, so a full 20 millivolt peak to peak error at the output of this D-fan. Now recall we have a 500 volt peak to peak signal. Right. But, but 20 millivolts is what you get. Now this is, this particular part is 86 dB of common mode range. So 86 dB is a pretty high number. Right, but our INA 149 is even higher than that. It's even higher than that, that's correct. Fabulous, so we could see there the output uh, even for a shorted input configuration which is what will show us the common mode rejection ratio of this part uh, 83 dB as you said I think 86, 86 dB yes. okay okay now before we move on because our INA 149 has much better common mode rejection ratio uh, much higher than 86 in fact um, but explain us a little bit uh, Greg about the safety precautions that we have to have in mind when operating the EVM thank you for reminding me of that Jose and I'd like to refer you to the to section 1.3 of the user's guide for the INA 149 evaluation module and it points out a lot of the safety precautions you must take when dealing with high voltage signals. If you note here we've got all of our high voltage signals and boards in this 3 8 inch thick plexiglass box. That's to keep, that's to make it very difficult to come in and touch the high voltage signals. It's also, we've got a switch in the top of the box that's tied into our power supplies or if I lift the lid off the box, it turns off the power supplies. So it makes it foolproof. So I, no, 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 none of us get hurt when we're dealing with these 500 volt signals. Definitely, definitely, Greg. Thank you. All right. Now, the next thing I would like to see is, well, if we can put uh, our other EVM there, which actually we have, can we see the performance of the INA149 side by side to that other DF amp? That's an excellent idea, Jose. In fact, we can. All right. Let's, let's go ahead and, and check it out. Take a look at that. So recall, Jose, we're going to look at the INA149 along with the alternate difference amplifier. Mm -hmm. The yellow signal is our input signal. Okay. Plus or minus 250 volts. Got it, got it. The blue signal is the, is the alternate difference amplifier. Mm -hmm. The pink signal is our INA149. Oh my, the first thing I can see there is that it's, it's only two, two divisions there going on the peak to peak. How much is that signal there? Exactly, that's a 10, 10 millivolt signal peak to peak. Oh my. 5 millivolts peak and it's one half that of the of the blue signal. Right, right. We are cutting right right at one half. So even even when comparing 86 dB to our part, uh, we are still splitting that error by at least a factor of two. We are, right. We're one half if not even less than that. By one half and in the dB world that's 6 dB. So our particular, the INA149, that's a 92 dB part we see on that. Fantastic. We can definitely see a very sharp a decrease on that error signal out of our INA149. Now I can see also, Greg, that we are applying a 500 hertz input signal. That's correct. And one of the questions I get very often from our customers as well is, well, will this device have that level of performance as we increase frequency? That's a good idea. We can look at that right now in a second. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at, at higher frequency components then. So we're at 500 hertz now. Let's try a kilohertz. All right. You notice the waveform shrinking in, that's a higher frequency? Yeah, yeah. And we're up to a kilohertz right there. Okay, I saw there a definite jump on the on the on the bluish signal. And ours and the INA one forty nine or the pink signal didn't change at all. Yeah, it's still at a two a two a two divisions there on peak to peak. Now how much are we we're at one kilohertz? What's the peak to peak amplitude of the of the alternative part? It's up to almost thirty millivolts peak to peak. Okay, so three that, times worse than the INA 149. Right. That means right. It's, it's dropped from 86 dB down to about 82 dB right now. Okay, so we that that common mode rejection ratio must be rolling off on the alternative device, I guess. Exactly. Want to go higher? Yeah. Let's go ahead and, and crank it up. Let's see. Let's see how how things change. So we're at one kilohertz. Mm -hmm. Let's look at five. Okay, I can definitely. I'm going to adjust the things. time scale here a little bit. Right, right, and that signal went out of the scale there. Sure we did. cannot see the Notice our signal. INA 149 is still 10 millivolts peak to peak. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's only a couple the of other, divisions. Let's pull the other one in the screen. It's now at four times the scale, or it's 20 millivolts per division. Oh my, so 20, and we have 
It's roughly 120 millivolts compared wow. to our 10. Wow, so 120 millivolts at 5 kilohertz and we're still standing pretty pretty much at, at the same level at, at 20 volts peak to peak for our INA149. Exactly. Want to go to 10? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's keep increasing that frequency. So that's Notice six. the blue keeps increasing? Yeah. We're seeing a little bit of increase in the pink now. Right, right. I can tell that it's starting to go above to... Even a, a device as precise as the INA149 still has its breaking point. But clearly, we haven't we haven't even doubled the no, frequency. No, no, it's not even doubled, and we are at 10 kilohertz. So fact, how high? Let me pull this down. Right now, the blue signal or the alternate mm -hmm. amplifier is at a scale 10 times that of the one. Oh my! Oh my! How many? So we're more than big we're more than 20 dB worse. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's a drastic change. Very drastic change, and I can see some ripple as well. Do Do you think we can keep increasing that frequency? Oh, Absolutely. 20! My God! So. You notice we just started seeing the 149. I'll go from 10 to 20. Mm -hmm. There's 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz. So our breaking point is somewhere between 10 and 20 kilohertz. Got it. The alternate part, as you see, increased even more. Yeah. It's going off scale again. Yeah, nowhere near, nowhere near. All right, all right. Well, Greg, that's very informative. Uh, the next thing I would like to talk as well, because, again, you know, our customers will want to know, for example, in a case where you are interfacing the INA149 to a current shunt, and we want to see what would happen if there is, say, a short circuit event on that current shunt, we want uh, an instrumentation or a different amplifier that can really respond fast to that event. Um, could we look at the dynamic response of the INA149 and the alternative part in our setup? Absolutely, and that's a very good question. We did design the INA149 with our customers' needs in mind. And why don't we take a look at that? We'll apply a 10 volt square wave differential mm -hmm. to the difference amplifier. Let's we'll see what the output does. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Maybe we will want to, uh, um, yeah, yeah, uh, get a couple of the signals out and, and start trying it. So I'll have to change the configuration here a little bit, but bear with me and we'll do that. Sounds good. Thank you. So now, Jose, we're going to look at how fast the INA149 can respond to a fast changing input signal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have Essentially the same setup, but this time we're applying 10 volt square wave to the input differentially. So in other words, we have the, the inverting terminal grounded, and I'm applying 10 volts to the non-inverting terminal. I see. So that step is really exercising not only the input capabilities of both different amplifier that we are testing, but also it's really looking at how the output stage responds under these conditions. And since our diff amp has a gain of one, mm -hmm. and the alternate diff amp has a gain of one, the output in a perfect diff amp would mm -hmm. look exactly like this. Okay. So let's look at the alternate diff amp. Mm -hmm. And one thing we notice that makes it not ideal is we have a slope on the output signal. That slope is our is the slew rate. Right, right. And notice on this particular part, this is a four microsecond per division on the scope. Okay. It takes about five microseconds just to cross the 10 volt line and it takes maybe 20, millise 20, 20 microseconds to fully settle. You notice some wiggling in here. Okay, okay, so yeah, I'm thinking about that. So it's, it's, it responds fairly fast. Can, can we look at the 149? I mean... Uh, Absolutely, we... let's take a look at the 149. Oh my, that's much closer. It has more than twice the slope, or more than twice the slew rate. Yeah. And you can see it hits the 10 volts much faster, and it settles after one one little ripple. Yeah, yeah, I can see that you know immediately it settles down and so in, a, in an application when we are trying to monitor a, a, a short circuit event that would definitely be an advantage. Absolutely, not only does it recognize it faster but it settles, it, it settles much, much faster. I should note that both of the INA149 and the alternate diff amp are loaded with a 2 kilo ohm resistive load mm -hmm. and a 1000 picofarad capacitive load. I see, no, but I can definitely see uh, a much faster response, much better dynamic response for our INA149. Well, that's that's excellent. All right, well, Greg, thank you so much for having you know, explained us some of these experiments. Really appreciate your time. Um, and no, this was very informative. Absolutely, you're welcome, Jose, anytime. Thank you. Um, now, if you have any questions or you would like to learn more about the INA149, including getting samples or the EVM that we use for our demonstration today, please visit ti.com.
Thank you very much.